Hello everyone, welcome to Ikeda platform and this is Ravin Jangir here, your electrical faculty and in this video I am going to talk about the characteristic harmonics on the DC side. So we will start with some of the points which are actually listed here and uh, denoting the characteristic harmonics on the DC side. So we will start with the first point which is written here. So the first thing is saying that is the order of the harmonics. What is that? The order of the harmonics and the characteristic harmonics. So we have already discussed what is the characteristic harmonics and what is the non-characteristic harmonics. So harmonics is related to the pulse number of the converter. So if we are taking the 6 pulse converter, then we will use this number 6. Okay, if we are using the 12 pulse converter, then we will we will use the 12. If we are using the 18 pulse converter, then we will we will use 18 number. Okay, likewise we are going to use and that formula is equal to NP plus minus 1. So instead of N, uh, that is a P is a pulse number and according to that we are going to use. The converter with pulse number P, converter with pulse number P generates the characteristics harmonics of the order PK on the DC side. So if we talk about the DC side, then it will be a PK only. So MP is representing the pulse number and K is representing the integer. Okay. So I can write that uh, P is your pulse number. Pulse number and uh, K is your integer. Okay. Now. For uh, doing or analyzing these uh, things, the first thing we have to uh, assume, okay. So we have to take the some assumptions and we are, uh, which are listed here. So if we talk about the first assumption, that assumption is written that the AC system supply voltage, okay, that perfectly balanced contains only the fundamental components. It is going to say that uh, if you are using the AC system and having the some voltage, the sub, the AC system should be in such a way that it should be a balanced for uh, the before fault and after the fault condition, and it should carry in the normalized condition. It should carry the fundamental component one, fundamental current, fundamental voltage. It should carry. Okay, so likewise it is going to say. And if we are going to uh, talk about the second point, that is the direct current of the constant magnitude. So as we are having uh, on the DC side the, that DC current, if you are using the DC side, so there will be our DC current and that DC current should be of the constant magnitude. We have assumed that. Okay, that is ID. The wall conducts sequentially at equal interval of time. If you are using the 6 pulse converter, then each side is, uh, is uh, to be operated at every 60 degree operation. If you are using the 12 pulse converter, then each thyristor should be operator or each thyristor to be conducted. So every at uh, 30 degree. So and likewise, they are, they are going to be operated and uh, we have assumed and we have considered this assumption in this point. Now, the point number four is going to say that the commutation reactance, what is that commutation reactance of each phase is same. So let us, we have assumed that uh, the commutation reactance, commutation reactance for each phase, we have three phases. So for each and every phases, I have we have assumed that commutation reactance. So commutating reactance is uh, for each and every phase is uh, assumed to be constant. So that the calculations and manipulations will be easier to do. That's why these assumptions are being used. Now we will move for the uh, next slide. So if we talk about the six pulse bridge converter, what type of the? That is the six pulse bridge converter. Then output DC voltage so we have already discussed and uh, that is from uh, the chapter number uh, you can say the bridge converter. Okay, so from where? The variation will be uh, from 0 to uh, 60 degree. So if you talk about the what will be the omega t value. So omega t is going to be for any wall conduction. It is going to be from 0 degree to 60 degree. Or you can say there is a 60 degree operation for each thyristor. But what happens uh, due to the firing angle and uh, overlapping angles? There are the three ranges we uh, we see there. So don't go in uh, too much depth in that. But just remember so that we can analyze the uh, harmonics content. So if we talk about the first one, that is denoting the V naught T. That is root two V S L cos omega T plus two pi by six. And if we talk about that, then it is from zero to alpha. 
and if you talk about the from alpha to alpha plus mu this is the way for writing root 6 upon 2 okay so the one second root 6 upon 2 okay and that is a vsl sin omega t this way sin omega t n2 here if we talk about the third one then third is actually denoting the v naught t root 2 vsl cos omega t minus 2 pi by 6 that is a pi by 3 only so likewise uh, just uh, uh, don't go through in deep uh, deeply because these required but not that much uh, okay in your topics now from the fourier series we have the trigonometric form so if we talk about the fourier series uh, actually that is a conversion of the time domain or any function to into the frequency domain so that is actually representing the harmonics contained of any signal or any waveform so if you denote any function that is general representation of uh, that fourier in the form of trigonometry because it is having the trigonometric and exponential two types of configurations of the fourier transform and if you talk about the fourier series and this is the basic representation which is written here what is that this is uh, f of theta that is the function which is a function of theta and that is a a naught by 2 here it will be a sigma n equal to 1 to infinity so range is from 1 to infinity we generally take and a n cos n theta plus b n sin n theta a n cos n theta that is a b n sin n theta so these constants such as the a naught a n and b n these three constants are there so these three constants are actually the Fourier coefficients are actually the Fourier coefficients which is also having the formulas okay so we are not going for that formulas which is already covered in your mathematics signal system chapter we are generally representing or generally analyzing the way of uh, representation for the trigonometry so if we talk about that is a naught by 2 that is the average value okay uh, or mean value you can say the function of f theta that that is the average value of that now if you talk about the exponential representation if you talk about the exponential representation that is kind of the uh, root that is represented by the cn first remember that is represented by the cn and it is in the magnitude if we talk about then it will have an square plus bn square n is representation of your uh, uh, harmonic uh, which number of harmonic if you take the sixth harmonic so you will put n equal to six if uh, you are operating at the 11th harmonic then n equal to 11 if i talk about the angle that it will because it is exponential so ac according to exponential form it will have the magnitude and the angle so that is the tan inverse minus bn upon a so that is a way of representation for this i hope up to this uh, you have understood and the clear the points are already clear for you now if you talk about the second one expression of the harmonic voltage when we talk about the alpha equal to 0 and the mu equal to 0 actually i have taken the only the special condition uh, not uh, written or not uh, teaching you that uh, complicated formula because that is not required okay so i am considering and only the uh, important formula there and that important formula is going to be that is a vho what is the h that is the harmonic number o is representing when the mu is equal to 0 okay then root 2 v denote upon h square minus 1 that is from the some simplifications of that formula so when we uh, simplify that formula uh, putting the alpha equal to 0 mu is equal to 0 then this formula is going to be like that okay now so this is the v h o and that is the root 2 v denote upon h square minus 1 so we what we have done in the next thing so we just uh, use the v denote and divided by this so it is going to be it is going to be like that and it is the vho vd naught that is a root 2 upon h square minus 1 because here the root 2 will be remained and here the h square minus 1 and after the your what you know, approximate idea then it will be root 2 upon h square because when we take the harmonics or higher order harmonics then it is uh, comparable it is higher as compared to the 1 so we have eliminated the minus one only okay now so i can say that the harmonics of order six uh, 
12th and 18th can be computed okay and it is also having the oh, waveforms also okay depending on the value of the alpha and the mu we have um, that is drawn but i have taken only the sixth or uh, sixth harmonic okay and that is having the value of the 4.04 .04, then 12th will have the 0 0.99 then 0 0.44 so you can see that the harmonic uh, do, as the harmonic will increase so your magnitude is going to be down okay now generally the harmonic content increases with the alpha as the alpha will increase the harmonic content will increase okay so let us suppose alpha is equal to pi by 2 now vh upon v d naught that we have taken uh, in the above points that is a root 2 h upon h square minus 1 that is root 2 upon h so that is for that is kind of like that okay so it is going to be root 2 upon h now Sweden has provided a set of curves for the harmonic voltages that is a VH as a percentage of the VD naught against the angle mu and for the different values of the alpha. This point is going to say that uh, we have the Sweden has proposed some uh, the uh, formulated you can say the uh, your curves in such a way that it is showing the variation of the alpha and the variation of the mu. So that is going uh, that is going to so set by these points. Okay. So who has proposed? The Sweden has proposed. Now, now from the curve that is small values of the angle mu, from the small angle of the angle mu, the harmonic magnitude increases with the increase in the alpha. Higher order harmonics increases more rapidly. So I can say from these two points. If I talk about the small values of the mu, that is if the overlapping angle is less, in such a way that the harmonic magnitude will increase as we increase in the alpha. But when we talk about the higher order harmonics, then higher order harmonics increases more rapidly, increases more rapidly. That is shown in this figure also. Now, so let us suppose if we talk about the higher order harmonics, so if the h is h equal to 6 so i have taken the h equal to 6 the sixth harmonic it is the i have taken so same way the, these are kind of the harmonic 12th and 18th we drawn in the uh, their, their proposed form now now the constant delay angle alpha and the harmonic decreases and reach a first okay so for the constant angle alpha the harmonic decreases for any value of the alpha the harmonic will decrease first and then will increase and when it is decreased at approximately mu is equal to at that time mu is equal to pi by h and but for the mu is equal to pi by h plus 1 and mu is equal to and mu is equal to uh, one second mu is equal to h of uh, pi upon h minus 1 the harmonics are constant for any angle of uh, the any angle attain the maximum it will attain the maximum value when it is the 2 pi by h and it will attain the minimum when it is a 3 pi by h so likewise it is going to be operated so this is the basic uh, you can say the uh, curve which is uh, shown here this axis is actually representing the commutation angle that is the angle of overlapping and uh, this is representing as a percentage value that is a u6 upon u d naught likewise it is going to be operated so i hope up to this you have understood all the concepts related with this topic so tata bye bye and thank you